The amazing thing is that after he retired in 1975, for the next 35, 40 years, his esteem went up in the eyes of those people around the country. He wasn't coaching anymore. Well, it was because of the kind of man he was. He was, he was kind, and he was gentle, and he was wise, and he had a sense of humor, and he was just, he, he was just the finest to talk to. He's, he, didn't like, he didn't like being called coach. He was a teacher. And his work was, his canvas was during the week getting everybody to do exactly what they needed to do to, to, the, to be the best they could be for the team. And when, at the end of that week, he thought his job was over. And he relaxed then on the weekend when we played the games. It was because he was a teacher, first and foremost. Coach Wooden loved our academic success. He also, we know that Coach did not enjoy or did not enjoy professional basketball because he didn't appreciate the slam dunk or the showboating. There's none of that in gymnastics. So he really appreciated our student athletes going out and being able to perform solo, nobody to pass the ball to when you start shaking, and have the poise and confidence to perform and then come back and assimilate back into a team. He thought that was very important. And consequently, he really became the grandfather of our team. We are very, 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 very fortunate. And that is how Coach Wooden became so involved with gymnastics over the years. If I had it to do all over again, uh, I might just be a basketball player. And the reason I might do that is that I would have had uh, four years with Coach Wooden. Not that, not that my coach was that bad, because I think that Ducky was in the uh, Coach Wooden class. Uh, and I think that uh, Coach Drake's boys were pretty much uh, like the Wooden boys. Uh, they were uh, men who, who, who gave, uh, gave it all in the court uh, or the track. And their goal uh, was not only to be uh, the best that they could be, but uh, fill in, use your capabilities and abilities uh, in a way that the, the, your teammates would also be the best that they could be. As Keith said, there's not a single one of the young men who played for Coach Wooden who didn't feel that uh, uh, not only did he make them a, a better basketball player, uh, but they're better people. He's talking, just the two of us, and he's talking on the phone, and, uh, and uh, he said, uh, just one second. He said, uh, Keith, would you grab my calendar? So I went over and I picked up his calendar, and it was open. And it was one of those where there are 15 squares on one side and 15 squares on the other. And I, carried, I happened to take a glance, and I looked at it, and I thought, my golly, I handed it to him. And all 30 days had two or three dates in there. He was two or three every day. And so he got off the phone. And I said, Coach, what's the point of this? You're busier than most CEOs in the country. 96. And he said, well, two things. He said, keeps me busy, keeps me going. I've got something to look forward to. And the other thing is, I want to be a better man tomorrow than I am today. And having those visits from all of those people keeps him motivated in doing that. That's a great, that's a great lesson for all of us. Here's this man who's 96 telling us, telling us that. The other thing is, uh, I said to him one time, and you know all the honors and the accolades and everything of, that Coach Wooden received over the years, just the finest of, of, of everything. And I said to him, how would you like to be remembered? He was probably 97 at the time. How would you like to be remembered? And his answer came just like that. And he said, I'd like to be remembered as coming as close as I could possibly be to the man that my father was.